What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Underground Growers. I'm still your main vein, Iceberg Stem. In this episode, we're going to be talking about thrips and spider mites. We are here in my garage in one of my veg tents. I have two, four, I have six UG plants. It's a um, strand I created. Um, I had a male, I had a male plant and I pollinated some female plants and I came out with a few different strands, but, uh, we'll get into that in another episode, but this episode, let's talk about these thrips and these spider mites. We'll take a closer look at the plants here in a minute, but I just want to talk about these spider mites. I'm having a real big issue with spider mites and thrips. Uh, this is my, like I said, this is my veg tent, and it's out here in my garage, and it's, these thrips and these spider mites are a constant, a reoccurring problem that I'm having, so I uh, kind of want to get to the root of the problem and knock it out, but um, these plants are about four weeks close to four weeks into um, veg. So I haven't taken them out of these one garden pots yet. Um, I let them do about four weeks in veg before I put them in two or three gallon pots. But I wanna address these thrips and spider mites issue before I repot them. At first, um, I was going crazy trying to figure out where these thrips and spider mites were coming from. Um, I figured it was, because I have this tent out here in the garage, I figured it may be coming from outside or some kind of insects in my garage, maybe. Um, then I thought that, I thought a lot of different things of where the spider mice and the thrips were coming from, but I think I finally got it narrowed down that it's coming in my soil. I truly believe that these spider mites and these uh, thrips are coming in the soil that I buy from the company that I'm buying them from. You know, they sit in this little warehouse until somebody comes and buy these bags. So uh, I'm really kind of positive that the soil that I'm buying, not necessarily the soil, but the company is not pre-treating their, their soil before they put it out. So you can actually buy bags of soil that already has thrips or spider mites or any kind of other insects already in that bag. So um, I go about treating my insect problem with, with this. It's called Mammoth Cannon Control. Um, I've, I've done videos on this Mammoth before. It works pretty good, but like I said, I. Treat my, been treating my plants with this mammoth. It's, it's all natural. You can use it, in, whether your plants are in veg or in flower, it won't harm the plants. Because uh, it's pretty much all natural. You use it indoors and outdoors. So it's a pretty good product. Uh, if you're having any insect problem, uh, research this mammoth, and pretty sure you'll be happy with the results. You'll put about uh, 30 milliliters in a gallon or, you know, go with the 10 milliliters a gallon, depending on your problem. is how potent it, you want to mix it. You mix it with water, with a gallon of water, and you treat your plants with it. Um, you want to get the top of the leaf, and you want to spray the bottom of the leaf because these insects be, we're going to take a closer look in a minute, but just want to explain to you that these insects be on the top and the bottom of the leaves. So you want to definitely make sure you spray under the leaf. Well, back to these, how I feel I got the thrips I, I, and the spider mites. I believe that there was in the soil, in the bags of soil that I bought. And I'm, as I'm repotting my plants, I'm just adding more thrips and spider mites. So, and I didn't really think it was the, the, you know, the chemicals messing with the plants or the lack of chemicals because I've seen this problem before. I've had this problem before, so I knew what to look for. 
uh, the little white dots on the leaves. Uh, if you take a closer look to Judas, Judas Luke, and you can actually look down or what kind of, whatever kind of magnifying glass you have, just look down at your, at your plant, and you'll see little insects and things crawling around. I'm gonna get take a closer look because I can see one crawling now, but we'll take a closer look. But I just want to tell you how to go ahead and treat your plants. And I also have some pictures. I was growing my, um, I have some wedding cake triple OG, and I was supposed to show you from start to finish, from veg to flower, uh, how they was gonna turn out, but. In that tent, also, I had this same problem, which led me to believe it has to be the soil. So I lost that harvest, um, the wedding cake triple OG. I totally, I'm going to show you the pictures. It, it was bad. Uh, so I lost that harvest because I was got pretty busy and I wasn't treating the plants as much as I needed to. So I kind of lost out on that. I figured I'd nip it in the bud and get this problem fixed. Um, you can also treat your soil. You wanna um, mix it, mix this mammoth. You can mix this mammoth with water, like I said, and um, just pre-treat your own soil. Or water, as you water your plant, just water it with the mammoth, that'll help. Uh, because if you have it in your soil, uh, just treating the plant is not gonna, not gonna work. You would have to treat the soil. But, yeah, um, I'm going to see these out. Hopefully I can treat them and bring them back. I'll keep you posted on that. I got my blueberry zookies over there, and I definitely don't want this problem going on when I start that strand. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a closer look at these leaves and how it looks when you have spider mites and thrips. If you don't fix this problem, you will lose your plants. It won't be worth to grow if you don't treat this problem. So look into some kind of fungicide, insecticide, and whichever feels, uh, whatever you feel works best for you. Like I said, I'm sticking with the mammoth, but you definitely want to treat this situation. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these, these plants and what to look for uh, with a thrift and spider mite problem. Okay, let's get up close and personal to these plants and really get in here and dissect these leaves um, so you can know what to look for. Look how these leaves are looking real funky looking. You can see they all discolored. You may see some spider webs. See those little white spots and dots I was talking about. Look closer, you see this thing moving right here? Look at that. Kind of zoom in on it. You see it right there moving. Right, oops. Right here. So, yeah, that's definitely. I was hoping we can catch one moving. These things are microscopic, small. Yeah. I'm gonna kill it. But yeah, these things are definitely are a plant killer. So I'm gonna go in here. I've treated. Um, once today. It says to, uh, I'm supposed to treat it once a week, but I think I'm gonna go with twice a week. I don't wanna go and cut all my fan leaves off. Um, the ones that are dead and dying. I'll go ahead and pluck those off. If you take one fan leaf off, you have to do the other side. So, I'm gonna pluck those off. It's ready to fall off. Let's see. Not 
just gonna go in and you don't really wanna go in and just take all of your fan leaves off. But the ones that are about to fall off, you can go ahead and take them off. But if you're treating them, um, you're still gonna need those fan leaves for growth. Um, so I would definitely leave them on. As I treat, you gotta keep the insects off your bud. Keep the insects off your bud, so I'm gonna go ahead and treat these fan leaves, even though they're discolored. With the treatment, you might be able to bounce bounce the leaves back to healthy. And the ones that you are able to bounce back to healthy, obviously keep. The ones that you aren't able to bounce off back to healthy, you can just take them off but definitely don't go in here and just take off all of your fan leaves in this situation just treat the fan leaves as you go see the spider webs on this one I'm showing you all of these before pictures um, of the plant what they're looking like before I treat them with this but while I'm treating them with this matter, you can see how well the mammoth works to get rid of the insects and not harm the plants. This is, uh, I just got this blueberry zookies um, out germination. I just put her in. This one and been in maybe close to a week. They're both blueberry zookies. That's why I definitely need to fix this problem before these get big enough to take over. Because I will be cloning these um, and running this strand for a while. So definitely want to get this problem fixed. I'm going to see if there's a way that I can go about checking my soil before I buy them. Um, I go in and buy a couple bags of soil at a time, so I definitely want to be able to check my soil before I bring it home and start repotting my plants. Because, like I said, I honestly believe that this is where this, the thrips and the spider mites are coming from. It's from the bags of soil that I'm buying. And maybe the people that I'm buying it from are not pre-treating their soil. We use a lot of fox farm, Coco Loco. So I like the brand, I like the soil. So I just need to check and make sure that my soil is not contaminated when I buy it. So you do the same. If you purchase some soil, you always look at your soil to make sure it's, make sure it's not uh, infected with insects. We'll be keeping you posted so that you know how these ladders are doing. Um, like I said, I have other videos of insects invading my grow and how I treat them. And this is just another one. I do believe it's coming from my soil, but so I will be treating my soil, the soil I have left, and I'm be treating these plants. So I just want to share that with you in this episode. We are gonna go through our ups and downs and our grows, and we gotta know how to deal with those downs and bring them back up. We gotta know what we're going through. So check your plants for white dots. You wanna flip under your plant, under your leaves. Under your leaves, see that? It's a little white. So thrips, spider mites. Definitely check under your leaves. Treat your plants. Treat your soil. Take a closer look at your soil. 
when you purchase it, after you purchase it, just make sure it's not, you don't see anything crawling around in there. In a lot of instances, even if you do, if you don't see anything crawling around, just go ahead and treat your soil. That's definitely what I'm gonna do from this day forward. Any bag of soil I buy, I will be pre-treating my soil just to make sure there's nothing in there because I don't want to continue to go through this problem. And I think that's the reason why I'm going through this problem because my soil isn't pre-treated with insecticide or down with fungicide or something. Before I upgrade these in the two, three gallon pots, I will be pre-treating the soil and I'll be repotting all of these in about a week or so, making room for my blueberry zookies. Stay posted. I'll keep you updated on these blueberry zookies. Go in here and take off some of these obviously dead leaves. Don't see too many. Maybe like some like this. They can go. But yes, we'll keep you posted on my fight with these thrips and spider mites. And thank y'all for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's been Underground Growers. Ice Bark Stem. Peace.